Hello and welcome back to the Sports Sermon. I'm Dylan Staggy. I'm Jason Gardner. And I'm Dan Majors. And it is not Sports Center, but the Sports Sermon here today. And today we have a special episode for you guys, a free agency preview. We're going to go through uh, the top 15 free agents that actually have a shot at moving teams and find two fits for them along with discussing their re-signing options, like what the team would look like and everything. So, first free agent up is Blake Griffin. Jason? No, what? we're starting with you on this one. I mean, latest news on Chris Paul, you start us off. All right. Well, I do think that if the Clippers can contend and grab another uh, point guard in free agency, Blake Griffin should stay with the Clippers. But if not, and the Clippers want to go into full rebuild mode, two options for Blake Griffin. First, the Thunder. I think that'd be a super exciting fit in OKC with Russell Westbrook. Him and uh, Blake Griffin would make an exciting duo and be fun to watch in OKC. Second, I think the Celtics, if they want to bring him in and don't go for the Hayward and Paul George pairing, Blake Griffin makes a lot of sense. They don't have a four right now, and Blake Griffin, I think, would fit in Boston. All right, Staggy. Well, I will agree with both of those, actually. Uh, The Celtics, you know, if Gordon Hayward does not sign then I think you go there and you make it to the conference finals for once, if you know what I'm saying. Um, And the Thunder, great fit there. I think uh, he can go and try and build something with Russell. Real original, guys. I went with OKC as well. I mean, it's pretty rumored to be that or LA right now. But just a team that I think makes sense. I haven't heard much about it, but a team I think it makes sense for Griffin would be the Washington Wizards. They they don't have the money, though. I mean, mean, they can clear it. Unless they don't want quarterback. I mean, I think you can clear that kind of cap space. You, you, I mean, you see Beal, it. Beal, Wall, you keep and Beal Porter. Wall. You keep Beal and Wall. And Blake Griffin, that's the whole cap right there. I mean, that's what the Warriors did. I mean, but they saw a lot of other guys like Ian Mahinmi's on the books for 16 million I'm saying, you can year. clear cap space. You've seen teams being able to do it. Either way, if they can make it happen, just like the Rockets got Chris Paul, I think it makes sense, and it puts them as it put, it puts them ahead of the Celtics for the second-best team in the year. All right, so second, we have Gordon Hayward. He can re-sign with the Jazz um, and keep building something. A five seed last year and did win a series. Um, what do you think about the uh, him re-signing with the Jazz? Uh, the Jazz, um, I think if he goes back, then that'd be great for them. Get them, him and Rudy Gobert back. Uh, they'd be looking good for next year. Uh, I went... With obviously the Jazz making sense, but I went Boston and Miami as the two spots that make sense for Gordon Hayward. I like Boston. Obviously, it's kind of the rumor to just we all we all kind of know about it. It's Celtics would be a good fit, but then Miami seems to really want to pair with Hassan Whiteside and Bam Adebayo. So yeah, that's a good fit for Gordon Hayward. Yeah, I think I like the Jazz resigning. He can keep building something there, but if he does want to move on, I have those two also. Uh, the Celtics make a lot of sense, especially if they get Paul George too. The Cavs might want to watch out if that happens. But uh, the Heat also really want him. Uh, if he could start building something down in Miami, they could get uh, another big guy, a four to pair with Hassan Whiteside, uh, Gordon Hayward, and Goran Dragic. They could be a decent team next year. Yeah, well, that makes three of us. Um, I have the Celtics need also. The Celtics, uh, I hope he goes to the Celtics because... Then we will have a series to watch next year in the Eastern Conference Finals, as George will likely get traded there if Hayward signs. Um, and then the Heat, I also have them, uh, only really because they are the only other team that's expressed interest. Yeah, uh, let's go into Kyle Lowry. I think it makes sense for him to re-sign, but if he decides he doesn't want to, what are some other teams you should look at? Uh, my two are the Clippers and the Spurs. Uh, Kyle Lowry uh, could go to the Clippers if Blake Griffin re-signs, and build a decent team next year. I mean, it's the same squad, uh, but without Chris Paul. But they did bring in some more depth, bring in Patrick Beverly and Lou Williams and Sam Decker, three guys that can come off the bench and be decent pieces. And the Clippers could contend again next year if he wants to make the move over to the West. Or he could go to the Spurs and compete in the West also. Might give the Warriors a little bit of a run for their money if he goes to San Antonio. Uh, I have the Spurs and the Bucks for Kyle Lowry. 
Uh, I think if he goes to the Spurs, that could put them over the hump to beat the Warriors. Maybe I, I, I would get I would pick the Warriors definitely, but it could get them over the hump as if if Kawhi was uh, healthy last year in their series, then it could have been a lot closer. And then I also have the Bucks. Uh, he could help for their bright future. Um, I went I, for me. It's between Philadelphia and Toronto. I think Philadelphia makes perfect sense. It really lets Markel play the two, and then that's a team I can finally get behind. I'm not so high on the Sixers as everyone else is. Yeah, I think they're really going to struggle. But if you get a veteran presence like Lowry, then you've got Lowry, Fultz, Simmons, Sarge, and Bead. Now I'm excited to watch them. So I think that's the main fit if he leaves. But if not, I think Toronto's where he should be. I mean, do the Sixers want Kyle Lowry, though? I mean, they just got their future point guard in well, you can play uh, Markel Fultz. And in the fifth year of Kyle Lowry's deal, or the fourth year, uh, he'll be like 36, 37 and getting paid He's like... He's 32 right now? Yeah. Okay, then he signed a three-year deal. I, I mean, I think he wants the full max on Kyle Lowry, especially if you're not going to a contending team. I think Sixers are contending. In three years? I mean, but Kyle Lowry, I think, wants the full four or five-year max. I don't. I think he'll go... I mean, it's his hometown. I think he'd do it. The hometown discount. We've seen it with Dwayne Wade. We saw it with other teams. I think he'd be, I think he'd take the hometown discount to go back to Philly. All right, let's move on to Paul Millsap, our fourth best free agent. Um, the Hawks not looking too hot. Just traded away Dwight Howard. Um, not really much going in Atlanta right now. Do you think he should resign? I think of the four, he is the one that's most likely to leave that we've mentioned so far. I don't think there's any chance these days. Yeah. What are some teams that you think you'd go to, Dan? Uh, the two that I have are the Timberwolves and the Jazz. I think with the Timberwolves, that would be interesting, honestly, to give them a big four for the future. I, they, they might not have enough to sign him, but yeah, that I would be... To, that I mean, and if you do, then you still have a point guard. And I feel yeah. like that's a glaring that's issue. True. Yeah. But I mean, purely, like, if money didn't matter, like, that fit. So who's your one? Uh, the Jazz. I have the Jazz also, if Hayward A reunion. Signed, Yes, if Hayward right. signs back, then they would have a nice big three with Hayward, and him, and Gobert. What does that do to Derek Favors? Trade him? Yeah, I think you have to. Yeah. yeah. Get good. more point guard. Something depth. like a sign in trade with Mills after the Jazz? Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. Okay. Uh, I went Nuggets and the Kings. I think the Kings really need a veteran presence in their locker room, and I think Mills could be that guy. I know they have a lot of bigs, but I think you get rid of Kufis, you get rid of some other guys. And you really let Millsap start as your four. You got him and Collie Stein to do the big to do the front court. If that doesn't work. I like the Nuggets. The Nuggets are really just trying to sign all the max contracts they can. They're looking at Griffin. They're looking at Paul before he went to the Rockets. He's looking at everybody. So maybe they get they settle for Millsap and, t- and give him the max. I also have the Kings, like you said, Jason. I think the Kings need some uh, veteran presence and uh, would be looking for Millsap. But another team kind of like the Kings, the Suns. I mean, they don't have anybody over 25 that plays minutes for them. Besides Tyson Chandler. Yeah. So I think another guy that uh, comes in and uh, can play on the court, help uh, the young guys develop in the Suns organization. Yeah, I like that fit. They have a lot of big guys, though. Same thing with the Kings. Yeah. Another big guy, another power forward at our fifth best free agent, Serge Ibaka. Um Got traded from the Magic to the Raptors this year. Uh, do you like the re-signing in Toronto? What do you think about that? Uh, I like the re-signing for Toronto. I think it makes sense because they really need a four. You can let Patterson go. Honestly, if it's me and I'm Toronto, I'm looking at, okay, who's cheaper? Ibaka, Patterson, all right, we'll take him. I don't think you need both. I think you sign one and then go address other needs. I like that re-signing, but if not, I look at Boston and Chicago. Ibaka would be the backup if Griffin doesn't come. And I think for Chicago, it gives him some veteran leadership now with a very young crew, and he can help uh, mentor Markman and give him another asset to his game. Uh, I have the Heat and Clippers for Serge and Baca. I think that would be good with Dion Waiters. If he resigns back, then they will have a nice duo. Uh, the Clippers, um, as Staggy said, if Blake Griffin signs back, then they would still be contenders. So uh, Serge Ibaka there would be nice for them. Wait, mm-hmm. so it, I just confused on both, though, just because, like, heat-wise, you got Ibaka, you think he played the four next to Whiteside. I think But the then you drafted sense. Bam. What do you do with Bam? Uh, you drafted him with a lottery pick. Make, 
I think you kind of make him like the third guy can play either yeah. at center as or... As the 14th pick in the draft? I mean, that yeah, you, they, that yeah. you yeah. raged before. for? That's happened before. I've seen lottery picks that yeah. don't get a lot of notes. But, but I'm saying you raged... Like, I mean, you... Jason Tatum's not going to start for the Celtics roster as it yeah. is right now. But that's right now, a right? different case. I'm saying a guy that you reached for. You went a good five, six spots ahead for this guy... And now he's not even going to play that much? Or start? I think he'll play. I think he'll be like the kind of the third guy, the sixth man behind uh, Whiteside and Ibaka. I think that makes sense. The, the Clippers, Clippers is kind of interesting, yeah. though. I mean, if Blake Griffin did sign back, I mean, they both play the same position and be looking for big minutes. That is true. I guess, I guess I, if Griffin didn't sign back, then it would make a lot more sense, I think. Yeah, I don't know if the Clippers would do that then. I don't know. Just, I guess I feel could, like if Griffin doesn't resign, why would you not be rebuild? Yeah, I get that. Yeah. All right, for my two for Ibaka, I'm going to go with the Bulls, like Jason said. Uh, kind of the opposite of Laurie Markkinen. Markkinen doesn't play much defense, but can shoot the ball. Ibaka doesn't really play a lot of offense, more of a defensive guy. Um, can help can help complement each other for the Bulls. And the Nuggets, too, uh, trying to sign a bunch of big guys. If they really want to get rid of Fareed, like they say they do, um, then... The Nuggets would make sense. He can fill in that four spot. But let's move on to our sixth guy. Rudy Gay uh, opted out of his player option with the Kings. Uh, where does he go from here? Uh, I have the Thunder and the Pistons here. Uh, Thunder, that'd be nice to get with Russell Westbrook. Uh, they just need some guys to pair with Russell Westbrook, so he'd be nice there. Uh, and then the Pistons, that'd be nice um, maybe Luke Kennard can be behind somebody to look, to look after. Yeah, I also had the Pistons, but I also had the Miami Heat. I think you pair Whiteside, Adebayo, Drogic with a guy like Rudy Gay in there and making the playoffs this year. Um, Detroit-wise, I like him as a three that you can really put in because I think KCP, now that they drafted Kennard, is, I think he's the replacement for KCP. And so KCP's gone, so now you've got uh, Gay started the three, and that's a good, good little backward. I have the Bulls for Rudy Gay. I think he can come in and fill that three spot, help mentor the young guys. And, it's like, an expensive veteran, though. Yeah, I mean, it's not like the Bulls are going to do anything else with that money, though. I mean, how much do they have? They have that much money? I think they do now. I mean, Robin Lopez is, like, their only guy that's. Yeah, but I don't know. I, I guess like I get younger guys and then get cheap veterans. Like, I think what teams are going to be scared to do is do what the Lakers did and overpay for a veteran leadership. Like, dang, paying them eighteen million dollars a year. But the Bulls are at the start of their rebuild. Lakers are a couple years away now. I guess. But um, my second one, like Jason said, Miami. I think he can come in and play that three spot. They're kind of missing that right now. Dragic, Waiters, if he signs back, Gay, Adebayo, and Whiteside is a Pretty decent lineup. But let's move on to J.J. Redick. Apparently, he does not want to sign back with the Clippers anymore now that Chris Paul is gone. Uh, Dan, who are your two teams that J.J. Redick could fit to? Well, I just looked at teams that could use a solid shooter to, you know, get them over the hump and late in the playoffs. And I went with the Spurs and the Cavs here. Uh, I think they'd be great fits, um, both contenders, so, yeah. Uh, for me, I went Cleveland and San Antonio, I think two fits that are, that he's championship contender, can maybe get out of the second round, something he couldn't do in L.A., and uh, try to win a championship in Cleveland. Definitely have to take a pay cut, but I think it's worth it if you can go try to win a championship. I think JJ, J.J. doesn't really want a pay cut, though. He's never got the big bucks in his life. His last contract was only for $7 million a year. So I think a team like the Knicks, uh, J.J. Reddick could help uh, start mentor and help the young rebuild, uh, could fit along with Melo if they don't want to get rid of him. And also the Raptors, if he does want to go to a contending team, could kind of be the sixth man behind uh, DeMar DeRozan and uh, fit with the Raptors if he wants to play for a contender. But let's move on to Otto Porter, a uh, restricted free agent for the Wizards, who can match any offer. Uh, do you think they'll match a max offer for Otto Porter? I mean, I don't think they can match the max, but if it's anything less, I think they should. 
Uh, for me, there's really only one team that makes sense for Otto Porter. Maybe the Kings, but really I think it's Brooklyn or Washington. I think if Brooklyn can send the max and really throw it at Otto Porter and make Washington not be able to accept it, that's what Brooklyn needs to do. Because then you've got D'Lo, Jared Allen, and Otto Porter to build around instead of Rondé Hellas, Jefferson, Jeremy Lin, and Brooke Lopez like they had a year ago. That's things that you can get at New York basketball lovers back into. But really, I think if it's not Brooklyn, it's keep going back to Washington. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you there. I think it's definitely the Nets or Washington. Um, the the Nets, you know, that would be a great fit for him because they just need players that are young and have potential. Yeah, I also have the Nets. But one team that you guys didn't mention, the Sixers, they have a lot of money, and I think he could fit well with their young core, uh, kind of develop at the same time. Obviously, pretty expensive. They would probably have to offer him the max, but I think he'd be a decent fit in Philadelphia. I don't think he's worth the max for Philadelphia because they're going to need that cap space, and I don't think he's worth paying for five years when you're going to have to pay Embiid, Simmons, Saric, and Fultz in the next three, four years. All right, let's move into some point guards now. Uh, Drew Holiday uh, can resign it with the Pelicans, along with that uh, great duo of big men and Anthony Davis and DeMarcus Cousins. Do you think he stays there? I don't think he will. I don't think he will, but I think he should. I think it makes sense for him because he can really just throw oops and average twenty assists a game. Like he should be able to just do anything he wants with those two big guys. But I think he'll leave. I think the two most likely destination spots for him are Dallas and New York. His brother is in New York already, and now with Phil Jackson gone, I think it's a lot more of an attractive spot for some basketball players. I know that Jeff Teague already has expressed he's interested there now that uh, Jackson's gone. So I think there's one, and the other one would be uh, Dallas. I think Dallas could really have him come in and mentor Dennis Smith Jr. and really just grind it out, and see what happens and try to give Dirk a guy to play with his last few years. Yeah, I'm right with you with Dallas there. I feel like their two priorities should be re-signing Nerlens Noel and getting Drew Holiday. And then the Cl- I feel like another great fit would be the Clippers. If Griffin stays, then they could, you know, maybe be a contender. Uh, my two are going to be the Knicks and the Bulls. Uh, the Bulls, uh, Chris Dunn, we're not sure about him yet if he can work out. I like Chris Dunn, but, I mean, it's no guarantee. Drew Holiday, he's still only 26 years old and can give uh, the Bulls a piece to build around. And the Knicks uh, need a point guard as Frank Nielakina is not going to be ready to play uh, or really be a starter for a few years. So I think Holiday could be a good fit there along with his brother. But let's move on to another point guard, George Hill. Uh, Got traded to the Jazz last year and had a pretty solid year. Might be looking for a big payday as his contract was only $8 million last year. Where do you think he ends up? I gave two fits, the Clippers and Milwaukee. I think both can pay him now, and uh, he'd provide veteran leadership for both. Uh, For my two, I'm going to go with Dallas and San Antonio. I think George Hill uh, could fit in Dallas. They can pay him the big bucks. Or he can have a reunion with San Antonio. Um, he won't get money there, though. Uh, yeah, but they really do need a point guard. If they could somehow get rid of Tony Parker's contract and bring in George Hill. They can't get rid of Tony Parker. They have to keep him. He's $15 million, and they need to compete for a championship. They cannot you have can. that on the books. It's Danny with Mane. You can't get rid of either of them. You can, help, you can help him restructure his contract, but you can't get rid of Tony or Mane. Well, I don't know. I, I also like San Antonio. I think if you're looking for a championship, that's a perfect place to go. Um, and then I also have the Pistons. I think they definitely need a solid point guard. All right, let's move into our third decent point guard in a row, Jeff Teague this time. Uh, got traded to the Pacers in the same deal as George Hill uh, played this year. Do you think he resigns in Indiana after the Paul George situation? Um, I don't. It doesn't make sense for Teague in his career. I think he should go to the Clippers or, <clears throat> sorry, or to Minnesota. Minnesota would be a perfect fit for both. I think it gives him a chance to win. So, I just think those are the two teams. Uh, I have the Clippers and the Magic. I think if Griffin stays and they don't get Lowry or Holiday, I feel like he'd be pretty solid to get. And then I also have the Magic and the Magic. They honestly just need anybody. So that'd be perfect. 
Yeah, I think the Magic would want him, but I, if I'm Jeff Teague, I don't want to go play in that mess. Uh, for I, If I'm Teague, I think the Knicks or the Clippers make the most sense. The Clippers, you can go uh, contend if Blake Griffin resigns, and if you're the Knicks, you can go get the big bucks, be in a big market, and be the point guard of the future. No, you can't. You got James the Russell. The Knicks, not the Nets. I thought you said Nets, sorry. No. Uh, I don't. I, the Nets wouldn't really make sense My for him. Yeah, He's sorry. only I thought you 20, said Nets. Yeah. I thought like, what? Um, at our next one, we have Dion Waiters had a breakout year uh, with the Heat this year. Came out of nowhere on a really cheap contract and just balled out. So, Dion Waiters, Dan, where do you think he ends up uh, next year? Uh, for Dion Waiters, I have the Hawks and the Pacers. I think the Pacers, it's kind of interesting, but. Uh, I think he'd be great there. I think they can give him a lot of money, and that'd be great for him. And then the Hawks, uh, they just could use another point guard, and I think that'd be perfect for him. For me, I want the Lakers only if they can get him on a one-year deal. If Wage wants to bet on himself, I think it's a perfect fit there. He still get a lot of minutes, and he's a good fit next to Lonzo Ball. But if he wants to get big contract and get some stability, I think Atlanta's a perfect fit there, who's kind of in the middle of a rebuilding phase. For Dion Waiters, I went with the Clippers and the Pacers. Uh, the Clippers are going to need a two-yard this year after J.J. Redick leaves, and the Clippers can pay him a little bit of money now uh, with Chris Paul gone. And the Pacers also uh, need a two-guard, and they could pay him the big bucks too if they want to uh, add him as a part of their rebuild. But let's move on to another two-guard and Kentavious Caldwell-Pope. So was supposed to have a breakout year for the Pistons this year, uh, averaged 13 points, and but still could command max money on the open market. Do you think he ends up back with the Pistons? I don't. I think that's where they got Kennard. It gave him a chance to get rid of him, and so I think he goes to Brooklyn or Sacramento, two teams that can offer him lots of money. I'm right with you there, Jason. Basically, Nets and Kings, two teams that can need to get younger and have potential. That makes three of us. Contavious Caldwell Pope. Uh, the Kings make a lot of sense. He can kind of be the guy and get the money. Uh, and the Nets, he can start building something along with D'Angelo Russell. And the Nets don't have anything else to waste their money on. So, might give it all to Contavious Caldwell Pope. Let's move on to Andre Iguodala, the 2015 Finals MVP uh, with the Warriors uh, for the past few years. Won a couple championships now. Uh, does he go for the big money or stay in Golden State and try to win more championships? I wish he'd stay in Golden State because he's such a valuable piece for them, but I don't think he will. So I think he's going to either the Spurs or to the Grizzlies. The Grizzlies, I think, are going to let Vince Carter walk and uh, Iguodala can come in and play a more expensive role that Carter played, or the Spurs because he gives him a chance to go and beat his own team and the Warriors. Yes, I also have the Spurs um, contender, and that'd be great for him to go to contender. And then I also have the Nets here. Uh, I feel like he'd be a great fit to uh, develop some of the young guys. I went with the Sixers and the Spurs. I love the Sixers fit for Andre Iguodala. He can have a reunion there and really help mentor the Feds, um, Fultz, Embiid, Dario, and uh, Simmons. Uh, I think he'd be great there, can give them a three. Uh, and the Spurs, if he wants to win some championships, go down there to San Antonio and take a pay cut if he doesn't want to stay with the Warriors. I think the Spurs could give him a, a little bit more than the Warriors. And our 15th and final free agent, Danilo Gallinari, a big wing uh, for the Nuggets last year. Um, do you think he stays there and does nothing or tries to go somewhere else and mix it up. I think he doesn't care about getting paid anymore. He got his money, so I think he goes to two teams, the Cavaliers or Boston. I think the Cavaliers is a beautiful fit because you see guys that are athletes. I was talking to um, someone that I coach with, and he was telling me that he likes Wilson Chandler and Danilo Gallinari. And the more I thought about it, it really does make sense because that's what they lacked was a long three that can guard Durant and not make LeBron stay on, stay on him because LeBron really needs that rest. So I love that fit in the Cavaliers, but if he doesn't want to take that much of a pay cut, I like someone like Boston in case they don't get Hayward to really uh, shore up that three position. See, I don't think Boston wants him, though. I think 
Boston's either going to go big or go home with uh, Gordon Hayward and Paul George or nobody. I don't think so. But I don't know. Uh, I went with two teams that could use a solid wing and would be great fits, so the Heat and the Mavs. I went with uh, also the Mavs, like Dan said, uh, a team that needs a wing, uh, could be a solid contributor for them. I also went with a reunion with the Knicks, um, especially if they want to get rid of Melo. I think he could come in uh, where he started his career and get some more uh, big bucks and be uh, on the Knicks for the future. Yeah. All right. So what's coming up in the sports sermon? We're going to have free agency every day when there's stuff new. Us three at least, hopefully more with Zach, Michael, and John are going to be in it. Every day of free agency, we'll have the latest news as well as we're going to have Summer League, Orlando, Las Vegas, and Utah Summer League all coming up on the sports sermon. Come check it out. Yeah, we have a lot of new stuff coming, so if you want to see it all, make sure you hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed these uh, free agency fits. Make sure to hit the like button, and if you want to see every time we post a new article on our website or a new podcast, uh, go on to Twitter. The link is in the description um, to get to our Twitter account, so follow that, and um, we'll let you know every time we post something new. So thank you guys for listening, and we will see you tomorrow.